and welcome back to con the continuation of lesson two, example two, and doing the moment and cheer diagrams. And when I left you, <clears throat> I was trying to get it done in 15 minutes and didn't quite make it. So we're going to go ahead and pick up where we left off. And I'll slow it down a bit. All right. So we were at 24,080 foot pounds at the point of, I guess you can call it kind of the point of inflection, the point where it changes. That's going to be your max moment right here. And you'll find that the zero points are usually your max moment. This is a zero where it intercepts on the on the shear diagram. It's going to be your max moment on the moment diagram. So that's why we went ahead and calculated where x was. But anyways, so we're on area 5, which this right here is a5. In, in reality, if you have calc paper, you can calculate all these areas off to the side. And what you'll do is you'll do A1 equals this, A2 equals this, A3 equals this, and so on and so forth. But blah, 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 blah. And we kind of already did that just in our heads. But we're on A4. Let's put A4 down here, blah, blah, blah. Okay. A5 equals... Remember, it's negative because it's a negative shear, so it's going to be start going down. It's going to decrease on negative on your moment. And if you're very well versed in calculus, this will all make sense: the slopes and the areas and whatnot. But I suggest you go to Khan Academy to get that, or I will do videos later in the series to make it work and make it a little bit more well understood. All right, anyways, back to it. A5, area A5. It's a Well, first of all, it's negative. So, I did two equal sign. Let's go back and make negative since it's going to be it's it's a negative vx, so it's going to be a decreasing mx. So, it's negative. It's a triangle, so it's 0.5, and the area is it's going to be 6 minus 2.825, which is 5.125. And that's distance right here, 5.125 feet. And then we want to multiply that by, what are we? 4140 pounds right there, 4140. And you really could put this negative over here by the negative 4140 because this is negative. But I put it out here. Either way, as long as you know what you're doing, it shouldn't be a problem. And this equals 10,000, a negative 10,712.25. And that's in foot pounds, foot times pounds. And we are at 27272.25. So 27272.25 minus 10,712.25 is 16, 560. And hopefully it's intuitive by now when you're doing shear moment di diagrams is the moment and the shear are always going to end at zero. So this is going to be a linear since this is a rectangle this is uniform and this line this since this is uniform this line is going to be linear and it should so this doesn't have a slope to it it'll go down to zero or close to depending on how we rounded but I'm, I'm guessing since that 1650 16560 was a round number. I'm guessing this is going to work out to be a round number as well. So A5. Is that A5? A6. This looks like a 5. I'm going to make it a 6. Which I think this would have been A4 or A3. This should have been A4. That should have been A4. And this will be A5. Alright, A5. The real A5 is going to be negative but let's let's this time let's put negative over here by the, the 1440 all right so we have it's a it's a rectangle 
we know that it's 4 foot and it's negative 41, 40 pounds. 4 times 41, 40 should be 16, 560. And it is. Get a negative, 16, 560. And that's foot pounds. But everything's foot pounds, so we weren't writing it. And 1650, 16,560, I don't know why I'm having such a problem saying that. 16,560 minus 16,560 equals zero. And you know you're good because it came back. Now what you want to take out of this is, all right, well, I'm a simple beam. This is a simple beam, which in time you will come to see, well, it will make sense that it's a simple beam, so it will not have any negative moment. Uh, it will just make a smiley face. It will deflect like a smiley face, and that's positive moment. If it had, for instance, if you had, let's say, and I think this is the next problem, it's the overhang beam. The overhang beam will have positive moment, and then it should have negative moment in this type of area. Actually, it'll go all the way to the end, negative moment, as long as it's fully so if say it had a uniform distributed load, it'll have positive moment when it smiles, and then when it at some inflection point when it starts to go negative, it will have a negative moment. But hopefully that will make sense in coming videos. And what you what will you will take out of this? You can see the moment at each point. Now it's it's kind of different at these points in here and you could figure those out but it's once again it's going to be most important at your Im important points as I call them and at your zero intercept zero intercept at your uh, shear moment shear diagram is going to be your moment max which in this case is 27272.25 so that your moment max equals wherever the highest was on here, which happened to be 272.25 foot pounds. And if you were designing a beam, a reinforced concrete beam, you really don't need any reinforcing. Remember, it's going to smile, so you're going to have tension in the top, or compression in the top, and tension on the bottom. And uh, we will describe that probably more in mechanics of materials and we haven't gotten there yet, but hopefully that makes sense. If you're bending something and making it smile, it's going to push in the top, it's going to pull out the bottom. But since it's a positive moment, it's going to pull the bottom, you're going to have tension in the bottom. So you will put your, assuming this is a reinforced concrete beam, you will put your reinforcing in the bottom. And you will design for this maximum moment, which we're not going to get into how you do that exactly right now. But that's just to help you down the road. All right, since I do have time, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go ahead, and if once again, if you're confused by what I'm about to do, don't worry about it. There's a lot of ways you can figure this out, this problem, the max moment. Shear and moment diagrams get pretty easy. If, if you have a somewhat difficult... Uh, load configuration like this. But there are also some some equations in your steel book or sometimes in structural analysis books that for instance you will see M max equals W L squared over eight. And what that is is if you have a let's prove this. That's what we're gonna do. We're going to prove that M max equals WL squared over 8. And a lot of people have seen this, but um, I, I've talked to a few people that said, oh, yeah, it's WL squared over. I'm like, well, it's not a simple beam, so no, it's not. But we're going to, th this equation right here is for a uniform distributed load. which this is a uniform distributed load. Uniform meaning it's going, let's say it's 300. 300 PLF 
to 300 PLF. So it's going straight across. Let's, let's by doing shear and moment diagrams, let's prove that M max equals WL squared over 8. And you can find these in your steel book or, once again, your structural analysis books. They have these for just about any time of, of determinate beams that you'll come across. Let's go ahead and change colors while we're at it to lighten the mood. All right. I'm just going to do this quick. You have a equivalent load of, what, 300 times, let's say this is 10 foot, just to simplify things. 10 foot times 300 equals 3,000. So you're going to have 3,000 right here. And that's pounds. So just knowing what I know, this is going to be half. And this is going to be half because you have it right in the middle. Um, this pound, this load is in the middle, so it's going to distribute equally to each side. Let's go ahead and prove that because I don't want to do things just to do things. This is point A. Some of the moments about point A. This is your positive equals zero. We'll go ahead and go from left to right, and you're gonna you don't know this one yet, so we're gonna call it R1. This will be R2. So you want to say R1 is going to create a positive moment. And so we go R1, 10 foot, minus, since it's going to make it a negative moment, minus 3,000 pounds times 5 foot. Since we know it's since this is a 10-foot distributed load, it, it acts in the center of that load, the centroid of that load, if you will. And that's 5 foot. 3,000 times 5 equals, this equals 1,500. 15,000, my apologies. And that's foot-pounds. And then that's a negative, so you switch it over to this side. You're going to have 15,000 pounds equals R110, so 15,000 divided by 10 feet equals R1 equals 1,500 pounds, which is what we said earlier, 1,500 pounds. So 3,000 minus 1,500 equals 1,500. So my, my assumption was correct. Now we're going to go ahead and do shear and moment diagrams. And I'm going to go all the way back to get rid of this 3,000 pounds, and I'm going to put 1,500 pounds back. And I can't do that. All right. Uh, I'm going to run low on time. Son of a gun. All right. We're going to do M max equals WL squared over 8. All right. Shear moment diagrams. Let's see if we can get this done. Shear up 1,500, right? And then we know it's going to be going up 1,500 right here. So it's like that. 1,500. 1,500. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, do it in your head. You can figure it out. You're smart. Then you have your moment diagram. And this is going to increase. Since this is up here, it's higher. It's going to increase earlier. And it's going to go to zero at a point where the slope is zero right here. We know the slope is zero. And then it's going to do the maximum increase over here. So it's maximum increase, decrease, I mean. Zero, maximum increase. And then we know that this is area one. And that's going to equal area two. But area one is... 0 0.5 since it's a triangle, 1,500, and that's pounds, LBS, and then it's 5 foot, and that equals, that equals 37.50, and that's foot pounds. Now let's go up here, 37.50, so that's our max, and it's in the middle. Okay, let's go back and do WL squared over 8, so in max equals W L squared over 8. W is 300. L 10 squared over 8 equals 3750 foot-pounds. We did it.